pad out. So guys, we're back for another episode of the DXP podcast. And this time, the guests are getting bigger and better. We've got Mr. James Ski, CEO and founder of Sales Confidence in the House. So James, I'll hand it over to you. Who are you? What do you do? And why do you do it? Great question. Thanks for having me on board. Uh, it was great to bounce off your energy at the Sales Innovation Expo the other week. Uh, and good to see someone still out there with a selfie stick. So <laughs> kudos to you, Shane. Um, so my name is James Ski. I'm the CEO and founder of Sales Confidence. Uh, we're building the world's most valuable B2B sales community. So we help salespeople each stage of their career with their mindset, well-being, and overall performance. Our ultimate ambition, wherever you are in your sales career, if you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out cold calling, or you're a CRO taking a business to IPO and beyond, we have the tools, resources, expertise to help you get there. And we deliver that via a exclusive learning and development membership subscription platform. And we're also known for doing uh, networking uh, and talks uh, in the UK, but we're expanding that to the US and, and globally next year. Very interesting. So why on earth do you want to work with salespeople? Good question. So a um, couple of reasons why. Personally, for me, I kind of fell in love with sales very early on in my uh, career in life. So uh, for me, it wasn't something I just fell into. Um, so the story that I've talked about a few times is I was on holiday uh, with some family friends and um, one of the girls I fancied uh, in the group, her father was a success successful businessman. Uh, he had a book, it was called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. In that book, it talked about how you can build a business, become an investor, be successful. And also in that book, it talked about the skill of being a sales professional and how a lot of CEOs and founders become uh, start off in sales. So I knew in that moment, that was 15, that sales was the career I was going to pursue. And also sales drives business. Without sales, you don't have a business, you don't have resources, you don't have employees. It's the front end of business development and growth. And also, I think due to a lot of poor sales experiences and a lot of poor buying experiences, sales often gets a bad rap. And for me, particularly being in the software industry, it's very much a profession. And so I want to kind of support and, and help people um, uh, kind of access that profession and develop and evolve it. And also, quite frankly, it's the fastest way to earn high earnings. So, you know, by joining as an SDR at a SaaS business, easily within four to five years, you can be earning 100K a year. That puts in your top 1% of earners in the UK. And then from there, uh, you can go on to, to mega earnings. And, and just to add to that, actually, we just launched um, the, the 100K club, um, which is the world's first club for 100K earners. There's also um, a plaque for 150, 200, 250 and above. And we just want to acknowledge and recognize salespeople for the hard work they do uh, and support them in their career. I really do like that you have the same kind of vision and perspective on sharing and showcasing how much money can be earned in sales. That's the only reason I got into it. I don't know if you know any of my story, but I was, uh, I grew up in, I grew, was born here, grew up in America, then uh, got into a bit of trouble towards the end of my career as a US uh, resident. And I landed um, an opiate addiction, three rehabs, eight jails, one prison sentence for three years. And then I had to reshape my entire life um, to come back here. I worked in security, was about to relapse. And then I found a sales job working for less than McDonald's, low earnings, right? Worse than that. And, um, but I got to wear a suit and I got to go to London and I got to go on the train and I had the hustle and bustle of London in 2015. And through that, I worked my way up to the CEO's club and I sat on my CEO's yacht in Cairns. He's the sixth richest man in the UK. And I achieved that with sales. So I fucking love it. Now, there's also a big opinion, two questions. There's a big opinion on 
I don't like to speak about money. I think you should keep that quiet. I think it's a bunch of bollocks. Like sales is my sales and revenue is my scorecard. So what do you say to people who are kind of, they want to get into sales. They think it's interesting, but they're kind of like, oh, but I don't like the whole conversation about money. Well, you've got to ask yourself where that um, uh, perception of if money is good or evil comes from. And to be honest, it comes from your upbringing, your parents, your family. Um, and so often money is not talked about in a healthy way in families. Uh, generally, it can be very uh, difficult. There's a lot of negativity around it. Most people don't have what they need financially. Uh, so most people don't like to, to talk about it. Um, so I think the first thing is just to acknowledge what that your dialogue and what your relationship is uh, with, with mm -hmm. money to, to begin with. Um, the other uh, factor is... At the end of the day, uh, you cannot exist in this society, in this global economy, unless you have an income. And therefore, why would you not choose to make an income where you can maximize your earnings um, and uh, reinvest your earnings in um, you know, savings, in investments, in pensions, in property, you know, maybe, maybe even um, startups or have some fun with crypto, whatever it might be. So I think... The reality is, um, you know, listen to your own calling, listen to other experts out there, become comfortable with the subject mm -hmm. of money. And, um, you know, you pursue sales as a career, as I mentioned at the top of this conversation, you, you will be quickly earning, um, if you're good, uh, you know, and if you're shit. Maybe you'll consider a you know career alternative. There's plenty of other things in life you can do, so don't worry about it. But I would say that everyone has the potential to be. A I do agree with that. So let's say you're uh, a lot. A lot of people that I've spoken to, they always have this um, misconception about sales that it is a dirty kind of thing to do. It can be perceived as door to door telemarketing. I battled with that until my earnings were triple the earnings of my cousins, the people around me. And that gave me the ability to swing my thing as far as I could, right? And there's a few people that, let's say they're a chef at a restaurant. They're a cook at a restaurant. They're waiting tables. They want to, they all say, I want to change my job. What do you do? Why, what do you do? What is it that you're actually doing out there? You're always doing something new. They don't believe me when I say they can jump into a job at 35k a year. So to solidify my statement, if you are going to make a transition, maybe you've done it until you're 30, 35, maybe even 40, and you want to switch into sales. What do you say to those people? Do it. Um, you know, how do you start creating time in either your weekends and your mornings or evenings around your current role to upskill yourself? You know, learning or learnings decide on your earnings. I like that. So if you can learn the skill mm -hmm. of sales, put that into practice, then you will upskill yourself. So, you know, if I, if I was in an alternative career and I discovered sales, you know, you watch someone like me on YouTube or on a TikTok video or, um, you know, you came across um, someone like us on LinkedIn, I would, and I had, um, you know, the, 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 the vision, I wanted to change my career, I had the want, I had the will, uh, and I had the ambition, then I would start making phone calls, commission only for a company. So I would just literally plug into a company, could be anywhere in the world, because that's the great thing, you can work any time zone. And I would apply and say, listen, I'm trying to get into sales. I'm, I've got no proven track record right now. I'm willing to accept to be paid on any meetings I booked or any sales that I earn. And I literally do that for three months until I can prove that I'm good at, at sales. And then I would be applying for a role saying, look, I've just proven that I've learned how to sell in three months. I've still got my day job, but I want to move from what I'm doing now into a full-time position. Can wow. you give me a chance? I thought I was the only crazy one thinking like that, that to offer it, like to say, look, why don't you, there's a couple of people who have always asked, oh, I want to work. I want to do sales. I want to do sales, but I want 2000 base salary. 
And I'm thinking uh, a month. I think you have no experience right now. So why would I do that? Why would I, do you know how much of a risk it is for me to take my time and effort in spending time teaching you, coaching you, walking you through everything, showing you the manuals, teaching you how to behave, tonality? There's an endless list of my time or our founders or bosses or managers time that goes into it. And you've got to choose it wisely, right? So again, uh, I believe uh, what I'm saying is I believe truly that if you do want to prove yourself and you do want to get into sales, this is a massive shift in this AI revolution that we're in. And I believe there are going to be so many solopreneurs from this shift because, for example, me, I can 100x myself right now. With the use of robots and AI versus a human team, without sounding arrogant, I can 100x my ability. And my ability, in some cases, again, it may be perceived as being arrogant or bragging, but I know I'm five of one. That's why I'm the type of person mm -hmm. I am. So it's really interesting you say that. And we'll go into um, some of your learnings on that but i want to see what is it that if people want to come to you maybe they are experienced and they want to come and see more about what you do what would you show them in one minute sure yeah so should i share my screen okay cool so as i mentioned on the top our goal is to help sales people and sales leaders at each stage of their career with their mindset well-being and performance and ultimately, um, a next level in your career, if you're an SDR, might be an AE. If you're an AE, it might be enterprise sales. Next level for you might be, you might be earning 150, you want to earn 250K a year. Or you might be a sales leader and you want to move from an early stage startup that you've taken from one to 10 million to a company from 10 to 50 million. Whatever that next level is, we can help you get there. So we essentially offer a learning and development platform and you can come up today as an individual and just join as an individual member, invest in yourself on a monthly basis and get access to one-to-one uh, -one mentorship, one-to-one -one coaching, uh, weekly masterclasses, uh, a peer group accountability circle where you get access to other leaders at your level, or other individuals with a facilitator. And then we have kind of ongoing assessments, introductions and events. So that is all available as an individual. Now you might be like, well, I'd like to up level my team, upskill my, my team. So we have an option to do that um, as part of, of this me membership as well, uh, where you can up level and access your team. So whatever you at level you are, SDR, BDR that wants to be promoted, AE, AM, a leader that wants to build their team, or you're a founder that wants to invest for their team, that's all available as part of the sales confidence membership. And some of the big names you're working with, I think also just name dropping some of the net, like that's what drew me to you. I've been to some of the events. He has them at really plush venues. So share some of the people that are actually sponsoring, working directly with you. Yeah, sure. So, you know, we've got people that come from Salesforce, LinkedIn, um, companies like IBM that attend our events. Uh, and then we have the world's best sales technology tools that you should learn about if you're learning sales for the first time. Companies like Salesloft, Cognizant, which is a sales intelligence platform, uh, Clary, which is a forecasting platform, Gong, which is a call recording, call intelligence platform, um, and other companies like Videard, which is uh, video-based um, content, Ben & Tricks, which is an SDR recruiter. So just shout out to them specifically. If you have no experience right now in sales, and you want to get your first role in a software sales role, Venetrix, Elaine Tyler in there will kind of support you out. So yeah, we the, the world's best sales technology companies come and support us to build this community. And then we have the membership uh, value proposition that I mentioned, which is going to help people get to the next stage of their career, whatever they're working on. And what about if they're looking at, Rev Genius or Pavilion as other communities or maybe some other big competitors that you guys go up against. There's value in all of them, I believe. There's different people in all of them. There is crossover in some of them. But how would you say you differentiate or sales confidence differentiates itself from the other communities out there? Yeah, so I think the first thing I say is, you know, generally, you know, when you go shopping, People shop at Tesco's, Mercado, M&S, 
as to whatever it might be, right? There's multiple places you can go shopping. And from a club perspective, there's multiple clubs that you can hang out, right? Most people in London are a member of multiple membership clubs. So I think if you're a member of another club right now or another sales membership, it doesn't rule out becoming a member of Sales Confidence. Um, why do I think people love being part of Sales Confidence is one, uh, you know, genuinely like people have a good time. Um, we're very authentic. You know, it's a place where you can come be yourself and share your stories, your challenges. You opened up at the beginning. You know, I've been opened up about my mental health. I'm bipolar. So that's that's the, the thing. It's fun and people are very open. I think the other thing that differentiates us is we only work with software salespeople at each different level. A lot of the other clubs that you mentioned or memberships, they're very broad, often very diluted, very noisy. Um, you know, there's 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 mixed levels of um, quality in there. Our bars mm -hmm. are very high in terms of like aspiration and um, updates. And in terms of um, uh, kind of quality of growth mindset, we're, mm -hmm. we're just much higher. Uh, and also, you know, we're, we're probably um, on paper one of the most expensive. Um, and that's as a result. I mean, if you come to one of our dinners yeah. in London, you know, there are five star restaurants. We had a dinner the other week at the Dorchester, um, Gordon Ramsay's Lucky Cat, um, Barafino. You know, we're just we're just a class above um other communities really. i really like how you put that and in terms of like engaging now with community i think engaging with your community on certain channels platforms is very important whatsapp i sit on whatsapp probably 70 percent of the day in terms of phone usage um slack discord events like you say um I think I think one thing that is really really missing right now which is post covid is everybody's so stuck and confined to a remote environment that that camaraderie amongst salespeople when after Friday, you you know what it was like after Friday, you guys hit it hard. You hit your target. It's the end of the month. Let's go for fucking drinks. You get plastered. You have fun with all like, what is it? 15, 20 people we used to go out with at, uh, at our last companies, always all bar one uh dirty martini all that stuff and that stuff was so much fun right i loved i think that was the funnest part about being in sales was that camaraderie around friends uh girls around and everything i love that i absolutely love it <clears throat> so if somebody is looking for not i want to go party and go mad but they want a, a, a community where there is camaraderie you guys engage on a few good channels where people are responsive you're not messaging and is fucking crickets for seven hours, right? How do you kind of communicate that to people who are considering it? All right, uh, that sounds like a good way that I could be speaking with other like-minded individuals. Sure. So, I mean, the first thing is totally flexible. People can choose how they engage, how often they engage, how often they show up. Uh, generally, we have a dinner once a month. We have open events <clears throat> for different levels once or twice a month, um, as you noted in high quality venues. So there's a lot of in-person interaction. I still very much care about being in person and hanging out. As you said, we also do what we call kind of light socials where it's not, um, you know, a networking and talks. It's just come and hang out with some of the members. Let's catch up, see how things are going. So 100% from an in-person experience perspective, we're all about that. And then we've got our, our platform um, where we have kind of separate circles depending on different levels. So people get access to different levels of people. It's much cleaner and a lot less noisier than Slack. Um, and then also um, some of the groups have their own WhatsApp groups. Very, very interesting, James. Very, very interesting. So a big thing about why I run this podcast is not so much on the business side of things. It's to showcase and highlight the opportunities behind business. But all of that comes from experiences in life. And the only reason I believe I've excelled to the point I have right now for internally, externally, spiritually, career wise, um, it came from a number of really, really bad situations, hardships, obstacles I had to overcome, be resilient and continue through. And it kind of shaped my character today. So with yourself, were there any profound failures or experiences in your life that kind of gave you the shift where, all right, now I've got to make a change and this has got to happen because of this and walk me through what that was like. 
Sure. I mean, look, I've had plenty. Um, probably the first one uh, was, um, you know, I was fairly academic at school. Uh, GCSEs were okay, A's and B's. Then I got to AS levels and I got D's and ungraded. Complete and utter ungradable. Not even an F. Like, we can't even, we, we can't, <laughs> can't even score this guy. That, that was a real wake-up call that, you can't just walk into something mm. without preparation. You've got to do the study. You've got to put in the hours to get the result. I managed to turn that around. Um, I, used to, I used to be a high-performing rowing athlete. Um, most of, many of my friends represented Great Britain, went to the Olympics. Um, I went to Great Britain trials, was in the top 16. I literally fell in wow. out of the boat and lost my chance. And that was humiliating and um you know set me on a very dark path for a long time but i reckon because i didn't make great britain i i have a very much a global mindset and a kind of world-class port from mm -hmm. a high performance standard and i guess i'm just bringing that now to building a global company so you know they i think it's good for you to have a chip on your shoulder um and then the other thing is i've been in multiple mental health hospitals so I've been in seven different mental health hospitals. I've escaped some. I've been You've escaped? I've, That's, um, I want to hear about that. How the fuck did you do that? <laughs> well, I, I was actually telling someone this the other day. Um, so, I mean, the short story is um, I've got three kids. One of my, it was one of my son's birthdays. I wanted to go and see him. I was in a mm. hospital in the north of England. And I was like, look, can I go? There's like, you haven't got permission. You're still unwell. Um, so with my kind of influencing and persuading skills, I spent the whole weekend before the Monday saying to everyone, I'm, I'm going on Monday. It was great to get to know you saying goodbye to the patients, say, saying goodbye to the nurses. So in everyone's <laughs> mind, James was leaving. Now, of course the doctors hadn't given permission for that to happen, but when I walked up with my bag in a smart suit to the, the desk area where they have to kind of let you through double locks, something in their brain just said, yeah, this guy's free to go. So I literally wow. walked out, uh, ended up getting a taxi, getting a train all the way down to London, uh, went missing officially. Um, so, you know, the, the police were informed. And I, then I showed up to a hospital in London, knocked on the door and said, look, I've been transferred. And they yeah. knew me from previous years, but they were like, no, you haven't, James. Um, so I didn't get into that one. But anyway, yeah. So I, I, That I is what you off. call top not selling. You sold that one, <laughs> amazingly. Wow. So look, you've got an ambitious dream. Um, it's very, very inspiring to hear. I love, that's why I love doing this, to speak with other CEOs who have the vision. And that. what's your opinion on people saying you, you're moving too fast? You're always trying to go too fast. Do you hear that a lot? Oh, all the time. I mean, um, you know, it's probably part of my condition as well with bipolar. Um, I always feel like Me I'm too. not going fast enough. Um, I, you know, I feel, to be honest, I'm much more measured in these days in terms of sustainability. But, you know, I'm not here on a one, two year plan. I've, I've got a 20, 20 year vision of, of what I'm trying to build. So, um, you know, I also don't feel that rushed or that pressured. Mate, that's incredible. So tell me what 10 years looks like then. And I don't mean that in a I don't mean so, that in a in a broad way, all right? The way I describe it, I don't know if you've seen any of the episodes before, but it's four thirty two, okay, and we're on the eleventh of December. So at four thirty two on the eleventh of December in twenty thirty three, tell me exactly what you're doing. Are you in another podcast, or are you sitting with your family on the beach? And what? So, well, I'd, I'd be, I'm 37 now, so I'd be 47. I literally just turned 37. Me too. So seven. you're two days uh, younger um, than me. <laughs> oh, cool. There you go. Happy birthday. So, uh, you know, for, for me at that point, it's highly likely that I would be um, in a property probably in the US because that's where I get a lot of my uh, energy and excitement from. Um, like I did... This weekend, I would have just put up the, the Christmas tree with my now teenage wow. kids. Um, and I'd probably be, um, you know, either being 
driven or flown um, to my next kind of major speaking gig uh, or media interview where I'd be discussing some kind of subject that I'm passionate about around the impact I've had on mental health in terms of um, helping people understand and live with their diagnosis. Um, no matter what the label, I don't want people to be limited by their, their mental health. So um, I would have moved beyond sales as a profession. You know, We would have executed on our vision of being the world's most valuable B2B sales community. Um, we would have uh, events in the top 20 software cities in the world. Um, we would have tens of thousands of members. If you were, you know, young Shane in Australia and your uncle said you should try sales and you get onto Google or whatever the search engine is, is in 10 years, my content, our brand's content would be available for people to access to for free. Um, and we would be making people successful um, at scale. Um, and uh, then I'll probably head to the gym. Sounds beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. So as we come closer to an end, I want people to have executable advice. Okay. A lot of people go out there and you can see now I do it just to speed up myself, but like in terms of using GPT, you've got a lot of people just blabbing, blabbing, blabbing. So when you get to hear it from the horse's mouth and you get to see it on the fly, it really, really does change things. What's an executable hack that somebody can use tactically. So in the short term and get a result tomorrow, strategically over the long term, it provides exponential growth. What would you tell John or Sally to do starting today? So um, ultimately, uh, and obviously, we all have exactly the same hours in the day. Um, but what can you do at speed within an hour, half an hour, or a 15-minute segment of an hour in terms of how you move? Now, physically, you're not moving, right? Um, but the way that you move between tabs, the way that you might dial the phone or click a button or um, send a proposal, everything can be mm -hmm. sped up. And so like, how can you um, self-reflect and think about how fast you move today at your desk and then kind of 10x that so that you are moving much faster throughout an hour period of time? Imagine if you do that hour on hour, week on week, month on month, quarter on quarter, how much further you will get. Um, people massively underestimate how fast mm -hmm. they can get jobs done. Um, and so the quicker you can actually move between work and tabs and actions and tasks, the more you can deliver without, you know, burning out or, or putting more pressure. Just what you can do in an hour is what I would practically advise. And efficiency is one of the main reasons I'm doing what I do. And I would not have got to that understanding without sales, uh, employees that became a pain in the ass. I say it proudly. That's why I'm going to be a solopreneur from now on. I won't, I'll tell you what, I'm not a good CEO. I'm a good business builder. I realized I don't want, I want, I always wanted to be CEO just to say CEO, right? Found I didn't really know the true meaning of it until I saw what vision could bring. And then once you start going down the rabbit hole of building your company, Oh my God, it's like an addiction. It's incredible, right? And in terms of just moving fast, 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 it never ends. It's an, it, it, it truly is an infinite game. So James, where people want to find out more about you and get more of this knowledge, even from events, whatever the case may be, where can they find you? Is the, or Do you have a newsletter? Do you have a podcast? Do you have a YouTube channel? Are you on social? Walk us through your kind yeah. of channels that you're, you're you're available on. So anyone listening can sign up to a, a free newsletter at salesconfidence.com. Um, and personally, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So you can search James Ski on LinkedIn and follow me. Uh, but also I've just launched my um, personal James Ski YouTube channel, which I'm giving away pretty much all my expertise and content around mindset, money, earnings, um, business growth sales, marketing tactics for free. Um, and then, of course, if you want to take it a step further, just um, yourself or your team, uh, join the membership um, and we can get you to the next level. James, I really do appreciate your time and sharing all this valuable knowledge. Until next time, I'll catch you again. Thanks for having me.